With 26 Royal Caribbean ships to choose from, it can be hard to decide which is the best. From the massive Oasis class ships to the more intimate Radiance class, Royal Caribbean does have something for everyone. But which ship should you choose and which should you avoid? In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the best and worst ships in the Royal Caribbean fleet. Cruises on the newest and biggest ships certainly cost a lot more, but do you get what you pay for? Now, I haven't cruised on every single Royal Caribbean ship, and honestly, I don't know if anyone in the world has. I mean, I've cruised on some of the newer Oasis class ships, I've cruised on the older ships like the Voyager class, and also some of the high tech ships like the Quantum class. But this video isn't about what I think, it's about what millions of cruisers think. So, I've read thousands of reviews from websites like Cruise Critic, Cruiseline.com and TripAdvisor. I've got a massive spreadsheet and I've aggregated all the reviews to come up with the best and worst Royal Caribbean ships by reviews. I think you'll be quite shocked to find out which Royal Caribbean ship has the worst reviews. I know I was. So, here were all the ships from best to worst. Number one, Wonder of the Seas. It's not surprising that Royal Caribbean's newest ship is also rated as the best. Wonder of the Seas is the biggest ship in the fleet and is packed with the most features. There's just so much to do on board. You can expect amazing dining venues, the best suites at sea, including some pretty cool two-story accommodations, and lots to see and do with zip lines, water slides, and so much more. If you're looking for the best ship, Wonder of the Seas is it. But who comes in at number two? Number two, Odyssey of the Seas. Second place goes to the newest Quantum class ship. Odyssey of the Seas is the best example of the Quantum class, with a ton of exciting entertainment, including the 270 venue and the Seaplex, which will provide hours of fun. The only complaints I could find about this ship was a few people saying that the main dining room was a little uninspiring. And also, some people said that the ship did feel a little bit crowded, since there's so much to see and do on a ship that's not the biggest. Number three, Symphony of the Seas. Symphony of the Seas is another Oasis class ship, and again, it scores highly thanks to the amazing range of activities on offer. Reviews are overwhelmingly positive, and the bad reviews don't focus on specifics of the ship much, although the main dining room service does get a couple of mentions again. Number four, Allure of the Seas. Oh, the ship that made me fall in love with cruising. Before I stepped on Allure of the Seas back in 2013 for my honeymoon, I had never even seen a cruise ship before, and I had no idea what to expect. Our Lore of the Seas was the second Oasis class ship to launch. And while she's considerably older than some of the more recent Oasis class ships, launching 12 years before Wonder of the Seas, she still offers an amazing experience. And this has been helped by a full refurbishment in 2015. Cruisers love all of the activities available on this ship. But another familiar criticism is around the service in the main dining room, along with the quality of food in the Windjammer. At least there are plenty of choice for restaurants if you don't enjoy the food in either of those two venues. Number five is Oasis of the Seas. The first Oasis class ship, Oasis of the Seas launched all the way back in 2009 and has wowed guests for many years now. The sheer size of this ship is incredible not an inch is wasted. While the ship is overwhelmingly positive in reviews, there are a couple of negative comments that mention a lack of organisation, long waits for tables or bar service, and poor communication. These are in the minority though, and for the most part, Royal Caribbean seem to handle the staffing of this massive ship well. Number six, Harmony of the Seas. It's not really surprising that the five Oasis class ships occupy five of the top six places in this list. Harmony of the Seas completes the set the same minor complaints that other Oasis class ships have seen are repeated for Harmony. And if anything, they're a little more common. Minor issues with service and staff and longer waits than expected. Again, most people rave about everything and they absolutely love this ship. Number seven, Mariner of the Seas. Now here's some proof that the newest ships aren't always the best. Mariner of the Seas is ranked seventh best despite being the 15th oldest. Mariner was the last Voyager class ship to launch and it strikes a really good balance between activities and atmosphere. I cruised on this ship with my mum and my five-year-old daughter and we all absolutely loved it. Mariner of the Seas has since been upgraded with some extra water slides and some other cool stuff but this ship never feels too busy or in your face. Reviewers keep referring to this as a really nice ship. It's great for enjoying everything that Royal Caribbean has to offer without being too busy. Number eight, Adventure of the Seas. Adventure of the Seas enjoys the same reputation as Mariner of the Seas. Another Voyager class ship, 
She has a good selection of activities for kids and adults to enjoy, including water slides, the flow rider, and the rock climbing wall. Now, the comments from people that were less than impressed were quite varied. Some mentioned the poor ship design, some mentioned how the guests were older than average, and some said that the ship looked a little bit tired. But for a ship that's over 20 years old, there's plenty of life left in a year. Number nine, Independence of the Seas. For a while, Independence of the Seas was one of the largest ships in the world, along with her Freedom Class sisters. She was also one of the most popular ships for UK cruisers, being based out of Southampton for a few years in a row. Now she offers Caribbean cruises all year round. Like other Freedom Class ships, there's a lot to see and do on Independence of the Seas, and most people love the balance of the size against the smaller crowds. Any negative comments are focused on the ship feeling like it needs an update in some places. Number 10, Liberty of the Seas. Liberty of the Seas was the second of the Freedom Class ships, and just like Independence, she has a great range of things to enjoy on board. The main criticisms are that the entertainment isn't quite as good as on the newer ships. And the food in the main dining room and Windjammer are a little uninspiring. But again, she remains popular despite her age. Now that we've covered the top 10, let's skip through all the middle ones until we get to the worst ships. Because that's what you really want to know, isn't it? At number 11, we have Freedom of the Seas, followed by Serenade of the Seas at number 12. This is the ship that's sailing on Royal Caribbean's World Cruise. So some cruisers should be glad that it's actually okay. At number 13 is the 22 year old Radiance of the Seas. And then at 14 is Jewel of the Seas from 2004. The 20 year old Navigator of the Seas comes in at number 15. And number 16 is Ovation of the Seas, which honestly is a little surprising. If you remember, Odyssey of the Seas was number two in the list. So it is kind of surprising that we have to wait all the way until number 16 to see another Quantum class ship. At number 17 is Brilliance of the Seas, and at number 18 is Rhapsody of the Seas, which is one of the oldest ships from 1997. 19 is Anthem of the Seas, which honestly, I'm a little bit shocked about. I loved this ship, but there you go. It's not about me, is it? Number 20 is Explorer of the Seas, and 21 is Enchantment of the Seas. 22 is Grandeur of the Seas. This ship launched in 1996, making it almost as old as the Spice Girls. The band, not the actual people. Ginger Spice is like 50 now. Anyway, at number 23, we have Voyager of the Seas. Are you ready for the bottom three? Number 24 out of the 26 Royal Caribbean ships is Vision of the Seas, which is not too surprising because this is the smallest ship and so there's not as much to do on board. Second to last is Spectrum of the Seas. Spectrum is one of the newest ships in the fleet. She's packed with some amazing features, so it is kind of surprising that she's so low down in the list. The review scores are still quite positive, but there's just a lot of people saying that this ship feels too crowded and that the crew members can't cope with getting people to queue up for the activity. Now, the worst Royal Caribbean ship, according to reviews, is Quantum of the Seas. Are you surprised? I know I am. Quantum of the Seas made her debut in 2014 as the first of the new Quantum class ships. Looking at the reviews, the reason this ship scored lower seems to be some recurring problems leading to cancelled excursions. And with Quantum Sail in Alaska, the excursions play a huge part in the experience. Hopefully these issues have been resolved now. So that's your lot. Now remember, a cruise is what you make of it. So if you choose a big, busy ship, you might not want that. Likewise, don't choose a quieter ship and then complain that there's not enough to do. Doing your research is really important when it comes to choosing the best cruise ship. I do hope that you found this video interesting. If you did, please consider subscribing as I have lots more to share with you.